Well, there's the notification. We are live. We are live. <laughs> we are live. Happy we Thursday, are family. Live. Happy Thursday. Okay, I do this every week. Which camera are we looking at this one? I'm looking at this one. Oh, you know what? You know what? It's this way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to look this way. Yeah, How about that? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to look this way. We're going to look this way. Yeah. Welcome, Facebook family. Welcome, all of you, to a Thursday night chat. Um, welcome, Matthew. So good to see you. Welcome, Karen. So good to see all of hey, y'all. We're going to be talking evening. about managing money in marriage. Money. <laughs> yes, managing money in marriage tonight. Oh, um, what a topic. What yeah, a topic. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I invite all of you to uh, right. Listen, Team Newman's in the building. <laughs> Thank you so much, Team Newman. Um, we What's invite, on, we, invi yeah, we invite here. all of y'all to share this video yeah. with all of your friends and family that you're connected with on Facebook. We want to make sure that um, this topic in this conversation That's and this right. discussion is something that um, we are sharing collectively as a family. Um, we're going to just be very transparent tonight. That's right. Um, very transparent. And, yeah. really, and, re and really the heart of, of what we wanted to do tonight was just help somebody. You know, whenever you see our faces on the screen, you know, whenever you see us on uh, Facebook or YouTube, we're not doing it for ourselves. We're really doing it to help somebody, you know? So at the end of the day, what we wanted to do is just have a practical conversation. You know, we don't have a bunch of scripture out. We don't have any concordances or commentaries out tonight. We're just going to have, well, kinda. well we, we got them in the room, but that's not the purpose of tonight's discussion. So, you know, but really what we want to do is just help some people and we know that, you know, being sheltered in place, many of us for the last six, seven, eight, nine months together is definitely, I believe, for some families and some couples to have some real conversations. And, you know, Jamila and I have been together for 24 years. And we've been married for 19 years. That was a trick. I and, used to and see yeah, all those dates yeah, out. yeah. I, I think I passed. Passed the test. Um, so, you know, with that, we've had a lot of ups and downs um, in our marriage and our relationship and in our finances. You know, we've been, you know, on top of the mountain, so we thought. And then we've been in the valley, you know, really trying to pick up the pieces. So tonight, we just want to help somebody. Um, please share the broadcast, tag some couples or, you know, some folks you think may need, you know, to, to listen in. Of course, the rebroadcast will be here. But our prayer and hope is that whatever we share will just put some muscle on your marriage. You know what I mean? Amen. <laughs> we want to see y'all built up, winning, thriving, having healthy relationships including your, your your pocketbook that's right and and your money and this content is streamed on facebook through uh both of our private facebook yeah, pages it's correct. also streamed uh through the bridge community um fan facebook page, fan yeah. page and so no matter what platform or what page you're experiencing us from drop some questions in the chat we will yeah, get we all of the questions we'll be able to see um, all of the the comments and interactions in real time so even as we're talking and as we're speaking like don't um, hesitate to drop yeah. a question or um, a share a story or uh, ask us to expound on something if we kind of get on your page or get on your street a little Absolutely. bit um, with, with what we share. So uh, with that, where should we start at the beginning? <laughs> well, not all the way at the beginning. <laughs> I know you like to tell the story about how I've been paying your phone bill or whatever, but yeah, why don't you kind of kick us off? I know what I think is the first major so now uh, I gotta tell the story. Like, yeah, I totally, yeah, you like, got it. You got to tell I totally the story. wasn't even gonna tell that story. Oh, that, you weren't. That's oh, the I'm how surprised. we met story. Oh, that's not okay, the... okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. But it had to do with money. See, so in I was 20, in, about in 24 years, you get all the stories. You get all that's the stories right. uh, uh, mixed up. So I will tell this story as 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 folks are coming in, and then we'll start mm -hmm. from the beginning. So so Rufus and I met. My fraternity brother was Rufus's roommate. And so Rufus and I met in the spring semester of 1996, 1996 in the That's year right. of our Lord. And right. uh, uh, when we met at that time, 
uh, Rufus, it was about maybe five or six of us girls that came from UC Santa Barbara up mm -hmm. to Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, and Rufus was all just so super focused, you know, at that time and, and uh, really that didn't time, pay yeah. all of us too much mind. Mm -hmm. But in the fall of that same year, Rufus had the same roommate, shout out to John Payne, who was John responsible Payne. for the Chambers crew. <laughs> the first the first initial public yeah. offering of the Chambers crew yeah. got ushered yeah. through John Payne. So shout out to John. And so uh, I was on the phone with John, who is my fraternity brother, and I asked him how the summer was, how things were going. And I said, oh, by the way, are you still living with Rufus? And he said yes, and we had a conversation and hung up the phone. A couple of days later, John calls me back and says, Rufus wants to know if um, he can have your phone number. And then 24 years later, I tell the story with the punchline Rufus just shared, and he's been paying my phone yeah, bill yeah, ever that's the since. Line, so all Rufus was, all <laughs> Rufus was focused on, forget, forget, the, line. forget the beginning of our love story, like forget all of that. Yeah. All, all I was focused on, we talking about money tonight, all I was focused on is the fact that I am still and, and, and baby, the phone bill has changed. It like sure has. We got two other little back, ladies back, on the back phone then, bill we now. We're talking about a $30 phone yeah, bill, okay? Now now we, <laughs> the we, phone bill we, has certainly changed. That thing is skyrocketing. We probably add a zero to that phone bill literally, now. Um, yeah, literally, for real. Literally. For real. Have uh, mercy. Mm. Have mercy. So what I was considering the beginning of, okay, yeah. of our story, and, and, and it, it, our meeting had something to do with that because we did date four yeah. or five years come on somebody we wasn't all that saved and no. wasn't saved at all so we lived together for five years mm -hmm. and did all of these things before we got married but that's interesting maybe maybe we could dive in should, there should we, should we start we should we should <laughs> start, start there, there because okay. and i was explaining this to the kids the other day when we went on our walk yes because our daughters were asking me Jamila had some a commitment early in the morning. So I, every morning we go on a walk, usually the four of us. So this morning it was just myself, Winter, and Willow. And they were asking about, you know, what it was like having money in college. And it brought back to my remembrance that basically at the beginning of our heavy relationship, when we were living together as unmarried, we lived as roommates. You know, so living as roommates, as a couple, that was our first financial entanglement. Let's borrow, you Let's know, just... uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's term. <laughs> that was our first, first financial, financial entanglement. entanglement. Financial entanglement. But even with that, us being financial roommates, that was our first interaction financially. You know, to see, okay, and when I say live as roommates, Okay, we got rent, we're paying together. And then Meaning we half. Yeah, we're, Equally, we're, you we're pay paying one half, half on the rent, the you're paying half on the rent. And then yes. we got utilities and then we got our own bills. We were being roommates, and I felt like that interaction spilled into our marriage. You know what I mean? And to be honest, some of that mentality of being financial roommates, that's how we started our marriage. Financially. Financially, yes. where, okay, you got your money, I got my money, we're going to help, we're going to split these bills up so that each of us feel equal or equally represented or, or, or whatnot. And that's really how it started, you know what I mean? But that's not how it finished, but that was the start. Why don't you share with the people a little bit about how you felt as my girlfriend and as my wife when we were being financial roommates. I'm gonna have to take some notes. This may turn into a book, y'all. I, I, I kind of feel it. That may be the first chapter of financial roommates, but go ahead. Let me, let me scribble here. You know what? <laughs> I can. And for many of you that know Rufus, know that there's three devices open like right now. So help me. If you don't see him looking at the screen, Whoa, help him get I back. Just had to jot that down. Help him get That's going to help somebody later. Help him get back refocused. We got this room. We got one down here. We yeah. got one over to the oh, yeah. side. Oh, yeah. It's just, we, it's we just a whole, it's, just, covered. it's, covered, just, a, it's just a whole lot going on. But so, so I want to talk about this and answer that question really from the standpoint of not only being financial roommates, but really upbringing and mm -hmm. uh, attitudes mm. about money as oh, mm, 
You said it was going to be a book. Oh, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Go and and, and Adam, <laughs> cutting up. This is what happened. Upbringing. Upbringing. But, but, but upbringing and attitudes towards money and towards finances as a young woman and a young woman that is dating. And so um, when, as a part of, of, of my upbringing, daddy told me, what? Don't never, under no circumstance, rely on no man. Have your own. Be able to take care of yourself, stand on your own too. Um, be be in a position where if you have to to keep an exit door open, you are able to go through that exit door. So, um, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying anything was wrong with that. But when you talk about transitioning from being his girlfriend to being his wife. And then being his kingdom wife, because that was two different wives. He married one woman and then got a kingdom wife after, yeah, after yeah, some period yeah. of time. So, so, so I don't know. I feel like that might be another, <laughs> another topic for another day. But going from being uh, his girlfriend to being his wife, there was no shift in those early days in that attitude. So we had spent five years. And, and, and let's be real. We had bought our first house before we yeah, got married. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we we yeah. bought our first house together because what we, we don't want to spend money on a wedding yeah. and come home to an apartment. Yeah. I get all of that, but this is just some fellas things. that took some explaining. It, the, it was that just took some explaining. It, it was just it, it, to listen, sell that idea. listen, and 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 and, 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 and John is on the line. That, that's our cousin who has a young adult daughter wow. right now, and he said I told mine the same thing. Wow. And 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 again, there's nothing nothing wrong with that directive when you're in that that girlfriend yeah. Fr- yeah. phase. Yeah. yeah. However, when I tra- crazy. that part, but when I transitioned. And uh, we transitioned together. It probably took another three years into our marriage, another two or three years into our marriage before I was able to back out of that. Mm, Because at at this point, you know, I'm five years into the I'm standing on my own. You're not going to I don't have any accountability to you in the areas of my finances. Um, You know, whatever, whatever we do, I'm going to going to show you you know, whenever you happen to find out about it, but I'm going to keep my money tucked, you know, hidden. That's right. The, I had the other, uh, other account, you know, all of those, I, I, this is real story. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to the blow up. <laughs> uh, so that went on, that went on for about two or three, oh, two Lord. or three years within the marriage. And, um, that was able to happen in an okay fashion for a while. But but let me tell you the parts that that didn't work out so well mm. um, with that way of thinking. Once we got married, the, the first part that kind of didn't work out so well is that we were trying to come together. And, and how about, you know, when there's just no agreement, when, you know, a house is divided against itself, it's just not going to be able to stand. So there were some financial goals that we had as a family, as a couple, that because I was really kind of holding back and had some tucked away, we weren't able to achieve. The other part is, is that I really wasn't, you know, keen on, um, and because we had dated so long and been in that space for so long, I really wasn't keen on transitioning to a level of financial accountability with Rufus. I I just didn't want him in my business. You know, if I wanted to go and spend, and that's That's before we had kids, if I wanted to go and Go to Gucci with with Melvina. Come on, yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah, and come yeah. home with oh, oh, with a oh, handbag. That's the that's the price so can, of a can couple we car spirit, notes. Can we get spiritual <laughs> just for a second? Yeah. So y'all won't think we didn't we didn't add any type of revelation, on, to, just, the revelation to the but conversation. But the real part is, you know, when God said that Adam and Eve were naked and unashamed, that means a complete, total transparency. You know what I mean? And this whole financial conversation, that's what it was, is about let's invite one another into all of our business. You know what I mean? So, again, we had to have the Gucci conversation, you know, the Louis conversation, you know, the Nordstrom's conversation and the, the old truck restoration conversation. Part of that was about transparency. You know what I mean? And we hadn't developed a pattern of transparency. That's true. 
right? True. So it was That's really true. hard to come out of because That's we true. hadn't created this environment where that financial transparency was there from the beginning. That's true. Um, so That's if true. I can give pause for a nugget for somebody, yeah. To if, if if you are still feeling like you got the other other account, come on, Nisi, put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <let> me... <laughs> right. See there, there, there you go, pressing on stuff. You supposed to, see, you need, to have some, training later with Nisi. We need some, we need some help with some. We need our production you, people back here. I told with you, us, just, we over here struggling. I told you just watch him because he he can't okay, sit still. Okay, yeah, yeah. They try. can see the comments hopefully. Yeah, just back, try, right? just try. Yeah. But if you, uh -oh, if you, Uncle Lonnie up in here too. Uh -oh, see, see, oh, there you go. But but if you are in, <laughs> at a point where you are not, you know, um, at a place where you're willing to be transparent yeah. even financially, yeah. And especially now for folks at different stages, we were kids back then. So so my cousins on the line, we we were about Imani's age, honestly. You know, early twenties, early twenties, early early twenties, early twenties back then. So we were we. We did not have a big financial right. history, you Correct. know, at that time. Correct. We did not have, you know, this major money that we were pulling together. Yeah. We were coming from trying to figure out what our student loan situations were going to do and how we were going to transition yeah. into our yeah. first yeah. career opportunities. Yeah. So um, as, as difficult as that transition was, we did have the grace of, uh, of youth, so to speak. Yeah where we didn't have this high stakes um, uh, finances that we were pulling together. That's true. That's there are true. some that are on yeah. different stages yeah. on this line. Yeah. And so uh, having the wisdom and having the understanding as to when to, to, you know, seriously pull folks into that level of transparency, yeah. you know, that, that, that's a different conversation for adulting at a different level, yeah. but being in a marriage, is going to require ladies that uh, even if we have to do some reprogramming and say that was the directive for that season, but this is not necessarily the directive for this season, um, we have to get to a place where there's that financial transparency yeah, yeah. Um, and, and uh, that ability to be able to come together. And, and, and that's um, the thing candidly. about that is, you know, we went from living as financial roommates to then trying to mold our finances. And even in the process, you know, with your spouse, you're making joint financial decisions. And that joint financial decision making is helping the relationship grow. It may feel a little tight at that moment, you know, just like again, I remember Jamila you know, her family is very big on purchasing new cars, you know, and, and for me, that's not my thing. So again, so when you bought your, 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 that brand new Honda Accord, Come on. 1998 Honda Accord from Oakland Honda, <laughs> we were learning something about one another in that conversation. You know what I mean? Not that I was there to try and run her business or her trying to convince me of a thing, but we were learning. You know, when we bought our first house in Richmond, 1439 Carlson Boulevard in uh, 2000. 2000 for, I think, 208 grand, we learned one another in that process. So even though we were kind of on the roommate tip, that partial transparency, watch this, and the partial gaining of trust allowed us to move forward. And I believe what happens in some marriages is if there's never a, a trust gained between husband and wife, that's going to be a challenge. Because as you grow in marriage, there's going to be more financial decisions that need to be made. And if there's not a mutual respect and if there's not a mutual trust, how are you going to move forward and grow? as a husband and wife, it'll be very, very challenging. You know, so some of the, some of the, some of us are bumping our heads early on and transitioning from roommates to husband and wife with all chips in, you know what I mean? So again, so we went from financial roommates to all chips in, okay, paychecks, bonuses, everything is going into one pot. Maybe you should share about how, and I remember we were living 
in Vallejo, California, 5240 Zinfandel Lane, Vallejo, California, 945. Running Lane. all the receipts. I'm going to just run it down. Running all the receipts. So we were living on <laughs> Zinfandel Lane. Yes. And we came to that mutual decision to put everything in a pot. Maybe you could share about how do we come to that decision? I remember how I remember, but I want to hear how you remember it. <laughs> he want me to talk about the blow up. Well, I, I don't He want know. me to talk about the blow up. Let's okay, just talk well, about it. Praise Let's the just Lord. get into it. Hallelujah. Mm. So, like I said, we're about three years in. So, uh, you got to remember when we first bought that house in Richmond, that's when the market was hot, y'all. Y'all remember what it was like buying a house in the late 1990s, you, that equity would build up so quickly and, and you were able to kind of do some things and make some things happen because that's how the real estate market was then. So we moved into our second home and I still had my other money over here and we're trying to come together to purchase our second home and thinking about starting a family. And then all of a sudden, ooh, them checks start bouncing. <laughs> That was they call it. I forgot how we got the number because I was something I keep trying to remember what happened before we got phones. I just you know, remember the notices you used to get the mail. You used to get them. You used to get them overdrafts. Yeah, yeah. So anywho, yeah, yeah. It was some overdraft. It was overdrafts coming, and I probably had a stack of them. Let me just be real about the stack. It was overdrafts coming from everywhere. The phone ringing. That's when the house phone was ringing. So I couldn't even hide it like on my cell. You know what I mean? The house phone ringing. So so I was not able and and uh, was not skilled at being able to be masterful with finances on the level we found ourselves. Mm, and I was good. trying to take my old college way mm, of, yeah. you know, managing yeah. money um from, from from checking groceries at the grocery store now i had assumed different roles within this relationship yeah. roles within my corporate life and i just didn't make the flip the switch and make the transition and i wasn't the best at it let me just pause there i i i was not the best at the financial management piece of it he is much better at it than i am but i didn't allow him into that space so i got busted that's just the bottom line. Now, Rufus could say how he remembers it, but bottom line, I got busted. And it was at that point um, where Rufus said, and I just remember there being a a definitive foot down, like, yeah, we are yeah, going to yeah. come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is over, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, it, and it took three years for that to die, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we took, eight years into our relationship, yeah. three years or so into our marriage. We're still roommates. We're still roommates. We're still roommates. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so the next thing on our, our list to kind of talk oh, about was how Lord. this whole thing came together. And I want to, I, I want Rufus to jump in and talk about how we kind of went from, you know, our financial entanglement. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I, I yeah, think we did quite yeah, something, but yeah, from our financial entanglement to yeah, togetherness. Yeah. Now, here's the challenge of what we were bringing together. We weren't just bringing together our own individual attitudes about money. Yeah, wow. Right? And I grew up in the 90s, and, you know, yeah. I'm a 90s kind of world, 90s kind of girl. I mean, yeah. I had all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And, in fact, I wasn't even Jamila. I was J-Dub back then. So let me tell y'all something about her, right? She was just a piece of work. So um, we were also bringing our family attitudes That's true. about That's money. True. That's true. Into this conversation. That's true. So Rufus mentioned, and I got some real folks that can hold me accountable to this. Rufus mentioned about different attitudes towards material possessions mm -hmm. and how that showed up within the family. And, and my family's attitude towards money is, hey, we're going to take care of home, make sure all our bills are paid. Yeah. But if we got anything extra, anything, we're turning up. We turn it up. <laughs> right? We go. <laughs> We gonna get the new, the latest, the the whatever, and 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 and, and it was more of a um, an attitude or, or or a posture of I am going to enjoy the fruits of my yeah, labor yeah, again. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong. With, again, yeah. this is this is just just different paradigm, mentality. Mentality. Different mentality. That's all I'm talking about. Different mentality. And Rufus's family had a very different mentality. Yeah. The exact opposite. If I have it, I'ma hold on tight to it. Mm -mm. I ain't spending it. I'm not giving it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even come for me for it. And so <laughs> <laughs> we just going to pause right there. Yeah, he did the yeah. left. We just going to pause right there. But yeah. it was different. It yeah. was different. Yeah. So here we are 
um, both growing up in these two fa family dynamics and trying to figure out, well, which one is right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, so it's just and, like, and identifying, this is the other thing about husbands and wives. You have to find your success rhythm and playbook. You know what I mean? You know, I, many of y'all know I'm a big sports fan, but again, when you have certain players, you have to find a system that works for those players or get different players for the system. And for us, we had to find a system that works for us. And we're still today developing that system, finding a system and blueprinting that system. If you don't find your own uh, financial language and financial rhythm, you'll try and force something on a marriage and it may not fit. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So you got to be very careful of that. And we, we understand that at the end of the day, you know, as followers of Christ, yes, we are to be good stewards, you know what I mean, uh, of our dollars. And as we grew in Christ together, our relationship with money changed. Change. You know what I'm saying? But before we get into the whole faith piece, is there something you, you, you wanted me to so, share something about something? So, so yeah, yeah, and you already started to, to do it because, again, I had my version of yeah. so, some of the tips that brought us together. And that's what I want you to talk about just real practically. Like, yeah. what did us coming together look like? Well, so it was, yeah. it, was, it was the two attitudes. Yeah. And us kind of developing, too. Yeah. developing yeah. what our language around it was, but really practically, like we did some things with the accounts and some yeah. like share what together from a practical yeah, so, process. So, point looked you like. know, at, at that time in my career, I was heavy spreadsheet person. So I brought and wait, 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 let's pause. Laugh. Let's pause. At that laugh, time, I, we're done with the spreadsheets. Are we? Well, I'm, 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 I'm almost out of that. I'm almost out of that. But so what I was trying to do was understand basic cash flow yes. when it's coming in and when it needs to go out. Right. You know, so it was like, okay, let's write out all of our bills and figure out the due dates and figure out, you know, when our checks were coming in to just figure out, do we have in and out figured out? You know do what I mean? Do we need to change the due dates? Yeah, do we need to change the due dates? Do we need to, to put some with? stuff in your name versus my name? Because sometimes maybe somebody had more favorable um, interest rates or whatever. So that was step one. And then I feel like step two was creating a financial plan for us to come in agreement with. Because that's the thing about the spreadsheet was, it was, hey, this is where we're at. And then we would have another spreadsheet to say, this is where we're trying to get to. And to get from here to there, there has to be an agreement because there's gonna be some level of sacrifice that's usually involved with, you know, trying to reframe or restructure your financial household. But just at the basic level, it's about documenting where you are, and then forecasting to where you want to get to. Um, and for us, there was seasons of that. You know, there was seasons of, okay, we're paying off debt. You know, we're, we're, we're doing the, the snowball principle and paying off debt, paying off credit cards. And then there was season of, we just survive it. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so when you yet holding on financially, that's a time when, we understand what Bible say. We understand what Robert Kiyaki say. We understand what Forbes say. But when you're yet holding on, you're yet holding on. So that's not a time to argue with your spouse. That's a time to hold on together. So we went from seasons of financially sound and steward to yet holding on, to rebuilding, to losing. Then uh, again, to now being you know in a place of being comfortable. So again, every step of the way though, it's gonna require agreement and transparency. You know what I mean? And that's the thing about your marriage is, and this, I'll, I'll never forget that. One of the biggest shifts in our marriage was like Jamila said, Jamila said that, you know, it blew up. 
I remember we were in the office in Vallejo and it was like, Why man, I got, I got, you know, this Bank of America stuff. And I was like, you know what, let's just put it together. And immediately it felt like we both had got raises. That's what was, it was, it was insanity. It was like, well, dang, the time of the month when I'm penny pension, you have money. And the time when you was penny pension, I got money. And that's how God will do a thing. You know what I'm saying? And again, that's what the covenant of marriage is all about is the two shall become one. Mm -hmm. And that two becoming one is about your money too. And watch this. I don't care if you're the breadwinner. I don't care if you're equal in the revenue and income. It's still about two becoming one because some people, and we'll just call them some fools, will use their money to lord over their spouse and that's not going to win. You got it? That is not going to win, especially in California. Hello, somebody. Because California got some laws that'll yes. tear your head off. You run around trying to lord over your spouse for years, and then you run around and go to the divorce course, and you're going to be looking serious. Mm -hmm. So again, it's about two becoming one where there's a mutual submission. There's a mutual level of respect. Regardless of who's playing the role, that's the thing about husbands and wives, it's about playing your role well. So if you're the husband and breadwinner, guess what? Play your role, but value the role that your wife may carry as well. If your wife is the breadwinner, you know what I mean? And 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 you're you know, you got your role as the husband. Guess what? Excel in your role and cherish one another. Like one of our fr uh, one of our couple friends, the wife is the breadwinner, but the husband is the financial brain trust. You know what I'm saying? So it's very interesting to see them move and navigate in their marriage. She's out there hunting and this guy is, is creating plans and blueprints so that they can prosper. So, it's, but again, for that to work, you got to respect one another. You can't be coming in, y'all, you know, you ain't nobody, blah, blah, blah. And watch this. There's been times, let's talk about that. There's been times in our marriage where that role has has, has shifted. You know what I mean? Well, well, let, what... Let's go ahead and, since we getting transparent, let's go ahead and get all the way transparent. You know what I mean? But you remember there were times in our marriages but where... That's what 24 years would do. Sometimes he was the breadwinner. Sometimes I'm the breadwinner. But let me tell you, he's always better at managing it. You heard him say spreadsheet. You heard me say, I got all these bounced, <laughs> <laughs> overdrawn uh, you uh, cute, though. cute though. You was cute though. You cute. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, but you had some receipts for the bouncing. Like... I got some receipts. <laughs> You see this bag, don't you? You know, like, all those guys, these guys with this tin on them. Anywho, again, all true stories. However, speak facts. <laughs> speak facts. However, it came at an expense. So, so there's the the nugget I want to take away from this is is understand that playing our position isn't necessarily tied to who's who, who the breadwinner is. Um, what do you do when you don't agree? Okay, yes, we'll answer that. Um, but. Uh, DJ, we got you. We yeah, got you, bro. Yeah, because that, that, that's, yeah. that's still today. That's to this day. <laughs> that's, a, that's a daily process. <laughs> that's a daily process. Um, <laughs> the Amazon ministry. But anyway. <laughs> we're, okay, gonna, we're, we're literally going to talk about that, okay, DJ. Okay. But, to, to, but just to complete this thought, sometimes the breadwinner is not the best steward. And so um, yeah. you do have to Absolutely. identify within your Absolutely. marriage who the best person over stewardship, over investing, over making sure the engine or the machine or the management of the money takes place. Sometimes that is the person and happens to be the person that is the breadwinner. Sometimes it is not. So yeah. um, again, when all the money is in the pot, when, when, we, when we pull a Nipsey, all money in, yeah. Then it becomes who is the best manager or who is yeah. the best um, to give us stewardship and direction. Yeah. Yeah. And that may be either yeah. one of you within and not that the other doesn't have 
input or you know dialogue or is yeah. involved it's just hey i'm better at managing those dates and watching you know long term the 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 property taxes that are only paid at certain oh, times of the wow. year and i'm better at Ooh. you know kind of considering Ooh. all of these things and so that's all i will say about that well, the, yeah yes the togetherness part Ooh. is 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 so important and that togetherness the only thing i will add to this particular part of the discussion is that to, that togetherness is something that is constantly evolving. When Rufus and I met, we were undergraduates. Then we were uh, unmarried and no kids. Then we were married and no kids. Then we were married with one child, married with two, right? Uh, married entrepreneurs with two kids. And so all of those factors and all of those variables and all of those things that happen over time, we've lived all over California, on the Central Coast, in, in on the San Francisco Bay Area, back down here in Los Angeles. So our geographic region yeah, played a role in that. True. So every time you add one variable yeah. into that system, you have to reevaluate the system all over again. And these variables are constant, right? There's always something else to consider. Uh, um, uh, 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 our cousin is just coming out of the, this, this part of it, but now we have a child that's gonna be 24 months away from going into college herself. And so what does that, you know, look like exactly. for us yeah. financially? Yeah. And that's another part of consideration. Oh, Have soon. mercy. That's another consideration into the system. And every level brings that and every stage brings that. So this type of a conversation is one that's ongoing. It's not a, just a one and done because every variable, every decision adds something else to be considered yeah l l let me try and hit vj's question before i lose my train of thought um here but because you know me that the way that 44 is set up Ooh, is different y'all it's hitting um, different vj asked what do you do when you don't agree on how to use the money and you know i would say the husband and wife has to find a place of agreement that should always be the goal but then if you can't find that sweet spot of agreement at a certain level, you have to, and this is something we dealt with a lot when we were early in our marriage, we have to trust one another, even when we can't see it or if we don't 100% agree with it. That's why communication is so important. You know, I remember us making some financial decisions when I was, you know, a, a business owner, and I wish Jamila and I would have communicated more about everything in that because I felt like we would have came to a different decision collectively. You follow me? So sometimes, even when you're not agreeing, compute, continue to communicate it, communicate about it. So there's so everything is on the table. OK, and even OK. And then when everything's on the table, then guess what? Somebody's going to have to concede or a decision is going to have to be made. But VJ, I'll share this one example about, you know, there was a certain cruise that I did not want to go on. And I think that was was that 2018. Correct. 2018. We were we were broke. Um, um, or we sure didn't have enough money as much as I would have liked. Um, I was depressed. I was overweight. Um, I was exhausted and I didn't want to go on a cruise, you know, so I, I was no. And, and Jamila just did it. I don't even know if you told me about it, but it was she just did it. So, BJ, you would think that we were not in agreement because basically I didn't want to go. If I would have had the right to check myself, we would have never went. Fast forward. What we didn't know was going to happen on the cruise was we were going to get poured into. We were going to get rest. We were going to get some mentorship, including financial mentorship. And when we got off that cruise, man, some doors began to open. You know what I mean? Where we came off of that cruise and made some decisions and set our heart in a certain direction and things changed new opportunities, new revenue, just things just begin to happen. You know, so sometimes, especially as long as we all been together, VJ, we know how long, you know, you and your, your, your lovely wife has been together. When we got this many years in with the company, 
<laughs> we sometimes, even if we fussing, we got to trust them. You know what I'm saying? Enough, because again, we're not, we, we have a legacy, we built something. You know, so at this point we can fuss, but at the end of the day, if it's really important to them or they feel like it's important to our marriage, guess what? Let's let's rock with it. You know, let, let's let's lean into it. And again, the, the cruise was really a blessing to me and to our marriage. And I and I will also say very practically, there is most things that even philosophically today we don't agree about. No, that's, no, that's you know, good. so that's why that's, that's why true. I said VJ, that's a very interesting question and a loaded question. They used a new car thing. We just had to, we're not a good, there, but anyway, let me die. There are just die. some things we don't agree about. Rufus talked about the Amazon ministry. Okay, I have an Amazon ministry. I'm just going to be honest. There typically are several packages from uh, Amazon yeah, that are part of my ministry because I'm very faithful and dedicated servant. She's all in. I'm all in with Amazon, just teasing. But, I mean, not teasing. Well, anyway, you get my point. But, um, when I order things for, for Amazon, I order things for the house, right? So I, I might get towels to be replaced. I might see that we're out of goods or, you know, the kids might have something that's worn down or whatever. And Rufus just, all he sees is, it's just another package from Amazon. So I don't care if he's gonna use what's in the box. I don't care if it's for him. Oh, I see you've run out of something Have here. Mercy. Let me get you something else, right? Yeah. It's just the fact that something comes from Amazon. I equally feel as triggered by this truck. <laughs> and I'm pointing this way because, right, by this truck. Oh, and so Lord. Rufus is very passionate. Y'all know, I joking, we call it his first wife, but he's very passionate about restoring his truck. Rufus enjoys um, tennis shoes. And there's just some things that he enjoys. Right. <laughs> and so we have kind of come to a place, uh, right. That even though we might yeah, yeah, we, we big, bicker and comment about it and, and, and stuff like that, like, I still don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> right. And he might say, well, we shop once a month. Like what's the big deal. We, we don't necessarily agree about the philosophy of how that, that part of the resource is being spent, but because to Rufus's point earlier, we got so many years invested at the company. It's like, we're not gonna, that's not something that's major. Yeah. Rufus talked about that mentorship and talked about that, um, that stewardship. And so um, I do want to pivot in the conversation to kind of take us up to a, a present day that I want to share, but to talk about, we've had some key points and I'm thinking of Kenny Lou. I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of, um, uh, uh, you, you mentioned Kiyosaki earlier, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking of this most recent occurrence, but there have been some key financial mentorship that moments, we have received, yeah. mentorship moments, yeah. mentorship relationships yeah. um, that we have received over the years that I think have been key and pivotal. And before I turn it over to you, Rufus, I want to first say, um, um, to understand that we needed financial mentors. I'm not sure that we knew that at first, or if that's just, I feel like that no, happened more we, organically, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, to, it, to yeah. realize we're very intentional about it now, very yeah. intentional about it now. Yeah. In those early days, we were not. So, um, you, you know, now we got to the point, wait, y'all retired at 55? And y'all living like this? Wait, pause. Well, yeah. How'd you do yeah. that? Yeah. Tell us everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because now we everybody we've been, get a, a knapsack out, the that, notepad. Listen, we all in school. Listen, we, we all take some we, we we fully we that pulling 55, up. That fifty five year old retirement. We good pulling up because I'm, I'm like fifty. Is that you? Yeah, My birthday yeah, on Monday. Yeah. Fifty. Is that you? You know, yeah. it's it's coming around the bend. So we are very intentional about it now. We weren't always intentional about it. So if you could just share some of those mentorship oh, moments wow, yeah. financially yeah, 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 um, that yeah. might be of an encouragement to help yeah. some of y'all identify some of these folks in your own life that you can latch on to um, and connect with. Yeah, I mean, there have been some pivotal mentorship moments, um, you know, for us. Um, you mentioned Ken Lewis, you know, Ken and Lewis wife, and his wife, Connie they were very instrumental in showing us that there was another level outside of a nine to five job, you know? So they, 
they definitely took us under our under their wing and 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 opened that world to us you know to see wow you could actually be doing very well you know what i mean and not living on this w2 30 percent taxes out of your check every other week lifestyle so that was pivotal and then you know i think about you know our pastor um bishop carl smith he was instrumental in 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 helping us to learn how to use faith in finances you know what i mean because that's the thing when you start talking about money if you only think you deserve a certain lifestyle you will be very content with that lifestyle you know what i mean so you know our pastor he he taught us certain things in the Bible that helped us understand, wow, you know, there is more than, and it's kind of, you know, goes back to what, you know, Ken, Ken was literally showing. And obviously then there was some biblical principles. Yes, it's been a continual conversation. Yeah. It's been a, a, and, a and then um, another financial mentor, a, a guy named Jerry Garfield, he was our Robert Kiyosaki financial coach, but he came in, and he just wrecked our whole financial house. You know, he started basically evaluating, you know, our, our revenue, our balance sheet and said, guys, you guys got to make some hard decisions. And Jared lived not in California. So he didn't subscribe to this crazy cost of living that we were under. So he, he challenged us to cut bait you know, on some assets, some depreciating assets at the time. And that's what we eventually did. Very painful process. But again, it was mentorship um, that, 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 that helped us, again, just take an L so that we can grow in the long term. In the term. long term. And, and the only thing I would say and pause and say about that is that was when we started the Chambers Crew, Inc., so to speak, like that was the first time we evaluated ourselves without the emotion, if that oh, makes sense. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> without, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. without the heart strings, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. tell me where you want to be and tell me how what you're doing today is helping to create that reality for you tomorrow. And and that's why, and, and, and let me talk to church people, because that's why you have to balance you know, are when, when we're talking about finances and we're talking about some practical things in life, you have to balance, you know, those messages uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays with some practical application, you know, because there was a time and I know for me, my retirement is my seed and that had to get completely disrupted and that's one of the beautiful things when we came to los angeles and i'm gonna just tell it you know we came to los angeles i was getting ready to teach on finances for the first time you know since i had left the bay area and god whipped my butt and said rufus you have done an excellent job in sewing but you have neglected saving and investing. And he took me into the scripture. And, it, and that was a huge light bulb for me in that God's desire for our financial household was true wholeness, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so now, again, even today, we're thinking about, okay, how can we live this balanced financial life inside of our marriage and and what and again this is what i'm talking about you have to again you can't just study your bible only when it comes to finance you have to really take on some practical knowledge and information and for us the culmination another one of our financial mentors challenge us to get our trust in place and a childhood friend, he's a trust attorney. I had talked to him maybe four, three or four years ago. And I just put, oh, no, we'll do that later. 
financial mentor said, hey, y'all, y'all better get yourselves together. So we just went through that process, literally. Now that's hot off the press. That's, that's, hot that's off cold the press. and fresh. That's hot that's off the cold press. That's cold and fresh. Yeah. And, 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 and what that trust process did, it, it helped us look at this thing from, watch this now, we don't like to talk about this, but this caused us to look at our financial household from the perspective of some grieving children and grandchildren. We don't want to we don't want to talk about that. But that trust process put us in the seat of our children and our future grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? Again, after the after the benediction, after the funeral, what's being left? And we can quote the scripture a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, but how do you do that? What does that look like? What does that smell like? What does that spin like? Guess what? Going through this trust process, it 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 to me it opened our full eyes about what does leaving an inheritance and what does multi generational wealth look like? You know what I'm saying? Because the attorney helped us put it into some practical vernacular and challenged us. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know, and then our other one of our other financial mentor. We call him Shaft. Shaft came in and ran our numbers as well and said, you know what? Guess what? If you guys want to retire with this amount of income, you guys got a whole lot of work to do. You know what I'm saying? So again, it's important. We're, we're big mentorship uh, proponents. Financial mentorship is key. And, and church people, okay, you can have you know, uh, a pastor or a leader that can teach you, you know, what scripture says about financial stewardship, but you cannot only have that literacy. You have to couple that with bona fide financial literacy that is not going to be found, you know, in some of our, 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 our faith heroes. You got mm -hmm. it? You, you got to really search out and find some folks that got receipts. And I could take the conversation a whole nother direction for church people, but we're not going to do that tonight. We're, no, we're trying just, to, we're just going to keep yeah, it in the pocket. Yeah. We're we going to, we're going to stay in the pocket because again, at the end of the day, we want married people to have a grace and to, and to be able to have a wholeness in their money management. And that's that's a message we hope y'all getting tonight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and all right, Doctor Hope, good to see you. Good to see you. Check us out on the airplay, <laughs> a replay. Oh, on the replay, <laughs> on the replay, on the replay. Yeah. On the replay. yeah. Dr. Hope Harris, hope yeah. for you coaching. Yeah, that's right. Hope that's for right. you coaching. That's if you right. still on, drop your link in the chat so that's everybody right. knows how to how that's to right. connect. Um, uh, 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 Dr. Ho, especially grief counseling and coaching is, uh, an expertise there. So yeah. please make sure, yeah. uh, you connect, uh, with one of our very good friends and excellent ministry leader, Dr. Hope Harris. So, yeah. um, check her out for sure. And, uh, you know, Rufus was talking about this, this, this series of mentors along the way. Yeah. And, uh, the, the one thing about mentorship is again, really practically, you, you have to know that you need it. You have yes, to know that sir. you need it for different stages in your life. We have our, our mentors are not end all be all people to us in every area. We select our mentors based on their receipts and the fruit that they have yeah, in the yeah, particular yeah. area Aries, that we are lacking. Talk about the particular area. Yeah, so let me pause, right? Because <laughs> our our financial mentors might not necessarily be our marriage mentors yeah. or might not necessarily be our parenting mentors or might not necessarily be um, our, our, our individual mentors with who we are to be as women or men or how we are to grow as, as entrepreneurs. And so as we were selecting folks to be our uh, financial mentors, we literally, and this is something Rufus and I say all the time, can your life preach? That's so right. can That's you, right. can your life preach in the area? Um, can your life, are you trying That's to, okay. okay. That's okay. Can your life preach uh, in the area that, that we are seeking this guidance or in this area that we lack? And so the people that we seek out very strategically 
um, meet that criteria. That's right. Um, listen, Rufus and I have worked for a number of years and uh, we have, have, have had retirement opportunities through our careers. Mm -hmm. We have 401ks and things of that nature that we've just amassed wow. over the years. We thought that was enough. And for many, for many folks, they, they, they have that conversation saying, um, hey, I've, I've got a burial insurance. I've got a life insurance policy. My kids are going to be covered, right? Like, like that is enough. That's as far yeah, as the conversation no, that's, that's needs to enough. happen. That's Let me enough. tell y'all something. That's why I had to pause because because you y'all know enough. me. Literally, I start evangelizing. It gets on Rufus's nerves. Like, let me say I like this nail polish, for example. I'm on it, right? You are going to know I love it. <laughs> you are going to know everything about it because I start evangelizing about things that I feel yeah. very strongly and very yeah. passionately about. Yeah. And the the very first question the attorney asked me mm. when we Shoot. got in the trust process, let real. me tell you what changed it, what, what did it all for me. Can I just real. keep it all the way 100? Sometimes smooches be up here with it. This smooches don't it want down. to talk. I don't want to talk Shoot. about it. I don't want to talk about it's it. Landed the plane Listen, for her. I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to live forever. Yeah. Don't ask yeah. me what's going to happen when I'm gone. I'm never leaving. You know, this is how this conversation has gone for 24 years. Got challenged by our mentors. Oh, like, Lord. you know, and these are people we trust. Like, you need to get it together. So literally, before we got off the phone, Rufus made the appointment, we're going to go. And the very first question I got asked is, Jamila, if you go before Rufus and Rufus remarries and his new wife, Got real. What Martin say? It, it was caught. Got it real. was caught in my throat. <laughs> it, it, just it was caught in my throat. And his new wife <laughs> takes your money because California is what a common whatever. You yeah, know, all, yeah, all money yeah. in. You get married. Yeah. His is yours. Yours is mine. And his new wife take your money and don't give your girls nothing, right? Because unless I specify otherwise, yeah, it is his money when I'm gone. Yeah. And whether or not him and his new wife, come on, give it to somebody. I ain't going to be no new wife. I ain't speaking none of this. But but let me tell you what stopped me in my tracks. And I said, wait a minute. You see the yeah. whole change in my demeanor. Yeah. It got real. It got real, real Dacia, quick. It got, it got all the way real. It got, it got, <laughs> Dacia, it got all the way. <laughs> it got real in my entire, <laughs> in that moment. And I said, <laughs> so this is our exercise. I, like, I'm out, I'm out, live this nigga. <laughs> me and Daisha on the Peloton at 6 a.m. Come on, holler. Me and Daisha got a standard appointment on the Peloton, 6 a.m. Saturday morning. It's what we do. <laughs> we cry about it, but it's what we do. I'm pulling out the Peloton. I'm going to live forever, right? Yeah. However, that was the first time I, in earnest, had the conversation about what all of that looked like. Yeah, what does it look like? Yeah. What all that looked like. Here's the other family legacy piece that's very hard for Rufus and I, and I'm gonna pause and be real personal. Every generation on both sides of our family has started over financially. Every generation on both sides of our family has started over financially. Our, our kids, Winter and Willow, are the first kids that we know that all four of their grandparents not only went to college, but got master's degrees and doctorates. Both of their parents have advanced degrees, um, both sides of our family. What the, the, the truck that I'm pointing to over here was, was, was purchased by a business owner, by an entrepreneur, a property owner. And every generation on, on both sides of our family, we have all had to start over from scratch every single time. And we have all done okay. Like, don't get me wrong. We have been blessed. We have lived blessed lives. No and really, I have no complaints. What? But don't you know when you want something more for your kids? Like, I don't want my kids to have to start over every single time. That's right. L let, me, let me figure out this Kenneth Kennedy legacy thing. Let me figure out this Rockefeller. How the Rockefeller still spending monies? <laughs> Money from the yeah. 1900s. Yeah. How the Kennedy still spending money from the 20s and 30s and 40s and, and all of that? And, and again, can our kids pick out the zip code they want to live in? Let's That's just right. keep it hundred. That's right. You know what I mean? I want them to be able to, you know, go go circle the map and say, I want to be over there. I not be. live somewhere because that's where they can afford to and live. And have to start over exactly. every single time. Exactly. So that so so that was part of what we wanted to change in our legacy. And that is a dream that will outlive us, right? That is a dream that I won't get to see 
on this side of glory. But that was our hope and our desire that it's no benefit for us having conversations like we're having, having financial mentors, um, making tough decisions financially. And, and y'all can go check the tapes. We have had so many conversations about all of our financial highs and lows and what yeah, that has oh meant. Yeah, it's been some lows, y'all. Baby, let me tell you. It's been some lows. Buy the million dollar house, lose the million dollar house. Yeah, what? Yeah, IRS tax to... problems? Come on, somebody. Yeah, start yeah, over, start yeah. over a few times. Yeah, start over okay. a few times. It's okay. Listen, we know how to abase. Yeah, <laughs> and we got the game now. <laughs> and we ain't scared. It's like, yeah, what you gonna yeah, do? That's true. That's true. I, I I literally sat in my million dollar home filling out unemployment paperwork. What you gonna say to me? Is yeah. that, it's like what you gonna like? So that gives us a level of freedom, right? And it's yeah. part of our story. It's part of our journey. I won't take nothing from it. So I'm not. That's not my point. My point is is that because we have paid such a price to get this information mm -hmm. and to get this knowledge, in what way can we make sure it changes our children's legacy? Yeah. In what way will that make a different narrative? for the children that we know about and for the children that um, will say it's because of these two. Yeah, yeah. I have a different choice and a different opportunity. Um, that's legacy. That's the generational wealth. That's that's the that's the conversation. That's right. And so that togetherness going from financial entanglements. <laughs> <laughs> Roommates, financial roommates. Financial roommates, <laughs> literal roommates, roommates with benefits. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah. never just roommates. Yeah. Quit playing. Financial roommates, yeah. We were financial roommates. Yeah. <laughs> but going from financial roommates into the Chambers Legacy Trust, that's a whole different conversation and a different evolution. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't always easy. It wasn't always easy. Yeah. Um, so what I want you to do, and Rufus, we're, we're going to get to uh, uh, the last couple of points. Any questions that y'all have? Um, yeah, any anything? Um, look, check the I notes. Feel like we hit Financial all, together, all spending, saving, and investing, investing estate, estate planning. Wow. Okay. Um, your Andy. questions are yeah. Anybody got any questions? I know we questions. answered DJ's question. If anybody else has any other questions, drop it in the comment. We'd love to share that with you, um, or respond, or redirect you. You know, to another mentor source, yes. mentorship source. And we got a. Uh, we got yeah. We we got right, and we got a couple. We okay. Listen. We got uh, uh, the the president and CEO of Kingdom Wealth Management on the line tonight. Our sister. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Our sister uh, Tamika Caldwell. Let's say that yeah, slowly. Caldwell. Let's Caldwell. say that slowly. Tamika Caldwell is on the line yeah, tonight. Drop yeah. that oh, book yeah. in the she, chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drop drop your books in in the chat. Drop drop Tamika, your book. You drop your book. My in, sister, in the, in our sister chat. is a tremendous financial guru um, and whiz. Um, so she's a great resource um, for you listeners tonight. Um, so yeah, definitely take advantage of her. But yeah, if there's any questions. Um, what advice would you give someone new? Um, yeah, new, uh, you know, I go back to, you know, the roles and a system, you know what I mean? Where finding a system, a game plan that works for the, mar for, for the marriage and each person's role in the marriage. You know what I mean? And I feel like the other thing about finances, in hindsight, you can't rush the process. You know, managing money in marriage is like learning to, to do a, a, a ballroom dance. Uh -huh. It's not just going to be a, I got it. It's going to take time. It's going to take communication. It's going to take evaluation. It's going to take mistakes, recoveries. So again, I feel like it's a process. And as a new marriage, you know, marriage comes first, not finances. You know what I mean? So that's the other thing is it, 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 it takes a mindset shift 
you know what I mean? And and for us, you know, it, it was about, I'd rather have a whole marriage, you know what I mean? But have this financial powerhouse, but a toe up marriage. Mm-hmm. And, and let's borrow a term from, from R.A. Verney. I don't want to have mega money, but a stove front marriage. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so meaning that the marriage comes first and we have to, you know, look at money within the marriage in the proper perspective. You and it's a timing, saying? right? It, it, that, that's what I hear you saying too, because there might be other things within the relationship that are more pressing. Correct. Yeah. Prioritization. It's a, it's prioritization. a, it's a, it's a prioritization. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I also think that again, for us, and it, and it's so different for every couple, different stage, different challenges, mm-hmm. different, different levels for us. It, it took three years into an eight year, you know, relationship yeah. before we, started to do the dance but let me be clear when the spreadsheet came out at year three i don't know that i was all that bought in no, you know me, so you, you but, the <laughs> because you i still me. so i, I just remember. i literally was sitting here thinking like well when did it start to really click and that was it mm. that was another several ticks around yeah, the yeah. oh yeah yeah after it was, we it was multi- and, i feel like i feel like you know the truth of the matter is when we submitted ourselves to our financial coach, Jared Garfield, that's when it got real. Okay. Because I felt like we both valued his voice in this arena enough to say we got to make some. So tough that was decisions. so that was 05. That was about 05. Uh, yeah, 06, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. So 05, so so you're yeah. talking about yeah, you know, you're talking about yeah. Yeah, oh five. So so yeah. you're so you're talking about another another six years, you know, into the marriage. And I I do recall and I'm I'm glad you you mentioned that that it's easy for us. We're having a financial conversation, so it's easy to isolate that. But we had other things we were working on in our marriage, just again, going from being roommates to being married and what that meant. I, I thought it didn't mean any change. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, we had a big party. In, in a ceremony, so, and we've been together for five years, so what is this different expectation that you have for me as a wife when I really didn't know what that meant? Oh, yeah. Or didn't have true. language for that? That's true. So we had to work through that. <laughs> that kind of took, yeah. Um, that was kind of in the forefront in those early days of really just trying to figure out what that difference in the marriage dynamic was yeah and so this financial piece was an overlay on that but there were just other other things and other challenges um we were working through too we were a young couple and and and, and tamika on the line and she and she was there so both of our parents knew both of us as teenagers and and, and very young adults yeah. and so the, the moment where where i have to tell mom no mom I, i'm not going to tell rufus to do so and so and so 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 you don't have two kids right oh, yeah. <laughs> right you've got one daughter and i'm i'm now married and even managing you know our families in different dynamics because our families watched us grow from being That's you know in, in in one capacity and and that transition to to the next was just a shift for everybody so there were other things that we were just trying to navigate through um in those very early days while also being corporate monsters and being really aggressive with our careers um and and rufus living away for a while to to chase some career opportunities and some other things and so there were just a ton of other considerations in this financial piece then came to the forefront when it was time for that to be the next level of something we were working on so i think that timing piece just in the context of any of this is 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 you know uh, part of it for sure and then um yeah yeah so how do you uh discuss taking risks oh, that's making money question. you know when one spouse is more comfortable um with taking risks than the other and i mean from my perspective you know i feel like 
understanding why the other spouse is not comfortable. You know, that's number one. And, you know, sometimes I feel like let's play out the thought or the concern. Let's play it out. You know, let's walk through, you know, if we do this, what's what what's the best case and what's the worst case and seeking one another deal with that you know what i mean live with that you know what i mean because so i feel like sometimes that healthy communication is trying to really empathize completely with the concerns of another you know um and that's hard you know that that that's that's hard but then i feel like if you're hearing the heart of your spouse about why they're not feeling it or why they're concerned or we got this, we got that, or did you think about this? See, that's the power. The power to me and the couple is when they come together. You know what I mean? When 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 a husband and wife are thinking together on a situation and deliberating together, then it, it's, I feel like that's how each other has each other's backs and the blind spots. Jamila can see stuff that I can't see and vice versa. So when we're able to get to that level of intimate conversation, I feel like the path will be straight. So I, I do want to share how practically like that's shown up for a couple of times because both of us have started businesses and transitioned in and out of businesses and other things. I am more of the uh, risk taker. Like, so by nature, if mm -hmm. I get exposed to something, it's yeah. Before you stop talking, yes, yeah. I'm in. What you, you want me to sell, Mary Kay? Come on, somebody, real estate. Um, we when we was in college, I was selling energy. What was I selling? Um, long we, distance. We look at the house, she don't care about that. About the price we go of the to, we go to the house. Like, hey, it's like, yeah, give I'll me that. It, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take I say it. that just about every weekend. We still look at houses just about every weekend. And every weekend, I say I'll take it, and, and and it sticks, right? I've also learned that if I say I take it enough, I get it, you know. So. Facts. Facts. <laughs> so, Facts. so, so I am more of a, 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 of a risk taker. Rufus is more conservative. Here's where the vision engineer was birthed. Rufus wrote a book called the vision engineer. It, it, it got birthed right here in moments like this. When I would give this resounding yes, Rufus would ask because his mind works completely different. How much is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? What resources do we have that we don't have? Um, he would pull out the spreadsheet. This is why I hate the spreadsheet, <laughs> the right? Spreadsheet. Because everything had to calculate and make sense. Math never lies. But here's where <laughs> here's where I the think. but here's where the yield has come. Yeah, is that that my responsibility and accountability to him in all of my. Um, uh, riskiness or my willingness to kind of be two feet in is I had to make sure that it passed his sniff test before I jumped into it. So in other words, <laughs> if we had these conversations, either I had to go back and answer more questions or do some more research or um, uh, approach it a different way. Um, Rufus was often very involved in those endeavors and, and, and you all have watched many of these endeavors, what podcasts, radio shows, uh, yeah. come on, we, we, we gonna make it all pop again, right? We doing all of this stuff, right? So, so with all of these endeavors, if it kind of didn't make sense, I trusted him enough as my partner in thought, my partner in life to say, okay. Um, I've got the vision, but he's going to engineer it and do the math to make it stand up. And then when we come together in that, then we would make the final decision whether or not we were in or out. When he made the decision, um, because I know how calculated and methodical he is, it was just a no brainer for me. Because if he comes and says, I want to do something, he is probably overthought, right? So the opposite of me, I'm, I'm going to just do about this much thinking and I'm going to use my instinct and I'm going to feel my way. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I'm going yeah. to feel it. And, yeah. and that's just the difference between us. It, 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 I have more of an intuitive approach to, well, what I should do next or what I shouldn't do or, or whatever. Yeah. And Rufus has more of a calculated approach. So I know conversely, because he's not a big risk taker, when he decides to step out and do something, it's a lot more deliberative and a lot more thought. 
And so what I would, would say to couples that have one person that's more of a risk taker and one that's more risk averse, again, that partnership of if I'm the risk taker, I need to go and check with the, with <laughs> back together. That's yes, the whole thing. I need to, to check with when the you come together. Right. Ooh, because you're a bad somebody. Because y'all. you're gonna see, yeah. Jamila, you realize how yeah. much that costs. Yeah. Or you yeah. realize how long that takes. Yeah. Or you realize you'll invest this and, and the exactly. return won't be, you know, exactly where it needs to be. And even though I might be excited about something, it might not be the right opportunity. But if I call my math man, my engineer, my vision engineer, we're gonna run the numbers. And, and the numbers work out and, and the resources work out and the, the right questions are asked or the right people are involved in the process or the right infrastructure is in place so that it's not just something I'm excited about today, but it's something that can be sustained. Then then we kind of go for it. But that that took a while to get there. Like that wasn't this is like us us October 2020 talking. This is not you know how it happens all the time that's been a process it's this is where it is now, now. you know now. i will say this is where it is now because of of us going through so many iterations of that absolutely like i said he's watched me jump off cliffs a million times and, right and that's so. the other thing is like you know you have to account for life changing and managing your money you know what i mean because a conversation that you're having when you have an excess of two thousand dollars a month is one conversation right. but when you're in a deficit of eighteen hundred dollars a month that's a different conversation you know what i mean so but the good part is you're still communicating you're still loving you're still mutually submitting you're still honoring one another's role so that's the thing about in excess and when in lack, you still got to be able to work the same principles so that you can get to this place of agreement. And Rufus, you got you got you got more on 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 your end in the chat. Yeah, yeah, BJ, I see that. You got and, some and, Wendy, folks. and listen, and listen. Hey, I get paid to balance some numbers though, so that's that's the other part. And listen, listen. You haven't met Wendy Sanchez yet, Wendy. We go back to junior high. Forget middle school. Okay, I, I, this middle school is for these new new kids. Yeah, we went to junior yeah. high, so we we go back to like eighty six, something like that. Come on, <laughs> so we got Come on, we got receipts from eighty six together. So it, it it went to Pally and all that. So Wendy, thank you for, thank for jumping y'all. jumping in the chat and and and, and uh, uh, coming in. Uh, uh, Simone remembers ACN. I know you remember that's ACN. Right. That that's that was right. that was that's where right. it started. I, right. I think that's I was right. in ACN in ninety six or something yeah. like that when we met. And, uh, and, 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 and all those sorts of things. So, um, so with that, where would you close us tonight? It, it, this is a I conversation, mean, a conversation we can have y'all. We could forever, talk all night, but, you know, but, but what's your closing, closing? My closing, you know, for husbands and wives and, you know, couples who are dating or couples who have a desire, you know, to be married, you know, especially, and that was kind of a comment about, what about people trying to get engaged, married? Engaged, yeah, engaged, engaged with a, with a is, too. you know, in preparation for marriage, you have to understand the other person, you know, how they think about money, how they manage money, what their fears are, what their insecurities are, what their goals are. And if I was getting married, which I'm obviously not, when you're communicating about money, communicate to seek to understand. Don't try and communicate to try and convince, Lord, say, hey, I got the best jab in the business. Seek to understand. And it's after you can understand, then you can try and identify a path for agreement and a path of a plan that both parties, um, you know, can can agree to. So, So, you know, at the end of the day, I would end on communication. I feel like communication is the key. Me and Jamila have learned. We know how to make money. We know how to earn money. We know how to perform. We know how to bring something into the house. And for a lot of us, that's not the issue. It's about what you do, what you do with it when it comes in the house. You know what I mean? So we love y'all. We thank y'all for hanging out. Good night to the two Simones, to Wendy, who else? Greta, shout out. All y'all. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Caldwell. BJ, Mrs. Caldwell's on yeah. the line. We're gonna we're gonna wear that out. Um, Tom is good to see. Is good on. to see. 
So we appreciate exactly. everybody. Yeah, Ulysses Correll, another one of my yeah, uh, I mean, folks from way here. back. Yeah. Mother Bradley up in here. <laughs> yes, yes, Praise absolutely. God. We absolutely. thank y'all. This has been a blessing. Yes. And we we're going to do some more of these real conversations. Um, we did a survey. And if you haven't joined the Bridge Community uh, group, do so. We did a survey in the group and actually marriage was, I think, the thing that people responded to the most. So eventually we will have a marriage virtual small group, but we just wanted to crack the ice tonight. Um, so anyway, we, we, we just thank y'all. We speak blessings over y'all life. We pray and hope yes. that your marriages are whole, that they are healthy and they will be sustainable including in in your finances so with that we're gonna sign off and god say good night good night good night god bless y'all yes. share the broadcast